stop asking if we're there yet. Finally, could you fly this thing any slower? Keep up that attitude, drones, and I will. Good luck, team. <laughs> I love these guys. Hello boys and girls, I'm the Flying Teacup, and some of you have asked me to do a theory on the newest game mode Frontier Defense and a new faction called The Last Resort. So let's not waste any more time. So in Frontier Defense there is a new playable faction that is only available in Frontier Defense called The Last Resort, which is operated by two pilots that you've actually met before, Droz and Davis. But who are they? In the campaign they were a part of the 6th force squad that helped you on the IMC carrier called the Malta in the chapter called the Ark. David sometimes mentioned that they are a part of the 6th force in front of defense after you won a match, but gets corrected by Droves. Mission complete pilots, great work! Woohoo! That's how the 6th force does it! We're not the 6th force anymore, Davis. Woohoo! That's how the last resort does it! But why did they start another faction? After all, the 6th force is a family, right? Why did they leave the 6-4? Were they fired? What could have happened? Even though Droz and Davis isn't a part of the 6-4 anymore, they still seem to help out the militia and free the frontier as seen in frontier defense. Something we know about the 6-4 is that they do not offer as much money as the other factions and that they are a freelance group of bounty hunters and lead pilots. So what if Davis and Droz had to leave the 6-4 because they couldn't afford to keep them or that they wanted more money and left the 6-4 to create the last resort faction? But why do I think that money plays a big role in this? If we analyze the game mode a little closer, we might find some other clues. Davis and Droz only hire 4 pilots at a time and each pilot only have one titan type each. Isn't that a little strange? If you have to protect something as big and voluble as the Harvester, why would you only send in a squad of four? I mean, in Bounty Hunt the other faction sends up to six pilots at a time and let them switch between different titans on the field. So that might hint that the last resort doesn't have that much money at their disposal. But where do they get their money from? Well. Don't look any further than to the Harvester. The Harvester is said to collect resources. What's done with the resources are unknown, but most likely made to make things like ship, titans and other stuff. So what if Droz and Davis sells this to other manufacturers and possibly the militia? But in the first game the militia used the Harvester themselves. Why would they give away such a resourceful item to a newly found faction? Isn't it more useful to have the Harvester themselves? Well, sure, that makes sense, but we need to remember that Davis and Droz are former 6-4 pilots and have a reputation for themselves after the Battle on Titan. Also, in the first game the militia were pretty small compared to what they are now when they have retaken a quarter of the frontier. And with an reliable ally that can offer them supplies they might have focused on fighting the IMC instead of collecting resources. And in the worst case, they have them as a last resort. But why did both Droz and Davis quit? If you listen to how they act, you can hear that they have a different approach when it comes to the mission. Droz is more serious and calm, and gives the pilots helpful and smart advice, while Davis is more wild and crazy and acts like a moral booster to keep the pilots in a good mood. But for how long have they been on their own? Based on their armor, they seem to have left the sixth floor quite recently. But what about the armory that you can get different equipment from? How do the pilots get the money? The bounty hunter can't apply to this, right? And it sounds strange that the Remnant fleet would carry big stacks of cash on them while going into big fights. Well, maybe the armory gets resupplied every wave so the pilots can resupply themselves when they're not in combat. But why would Davis and Rose put a paywall between the items and the pilot? It's actually quite simple. If you were a commander, you wouldn't give all your strongest and most effective weapons to use one person, or a small squad. What would happen if they died? You will lose so much resources, and it's just too unreliable to do. But by killing the Remnant fleet forces, you prove yourself to Droz and Davis, and they allow you to resupply yourself. But what about the Titans? Seems weird that you are only allowed to use one Titan per game. I mean, I understand that it might be a little bit expensive, but it feels like David and Droz should be able to supply four mercenary pilots with a Titan of choice. 
Well, in the latest AMA with Respawn, someone questions Viper's North Star and why it could fly for an extended amount of time, which the game director Steve Akuda answered, no, that was just a Viper thing. Very rare parts, very expensive to modify a North Star to fly like that. But Viper, being a long time successful mercenary, until he met Jack and BT, could afford those parts and labor. What do this have to do with frontal defense mode? By completing a game of Frontier Defense, you will climb something called Aegis Rank, which gives you special upgrades for the Titan you played with, so they become stronger and more powerful. Or like the wiki says, Aegis Ranks are specialized Titan upgrades specific to Titanfall 2's Frontier Defense mode. They augment the Titan in question to have abilities much more powerful than the baseline multiplayer counterparts. Special parts sounds like something Viper had in his North Star, but those were very rare ones. After helping Droz and Davis, they might have given you the opportunity to get those uncommon upgrade parts. So what do you think? Do you have a theory regarding frontal defense? Comment down in the comment section and tell me. And if you have another theory yourself, then comment down as well. And with that said, thanks for watching and take care.